Hey, this is Matt Cox. And I am, what happened? What happened? No, I'm, no, and this not, is Isaac, I, do I introduce myself no, or no? Oh, okay. say, this is my first, this is my first time, yeah. so. You got to tell me what to Detail. and not to do. All right. Yeah, please. Easy. Easy. So kiss me uh, first. Yes. Just the tips. Just the tips. Um, okay. So Isaac, this is, this is Isaac Allen and he goes by Zach. Zach. And uh, that was I, my street name. Yes. It, it's so tough for a black and, guy named Zach. And really, so one of them hard names, you know? Um, so. <laughs> I, I, okay, okay. Okay. So, um. Yeah, so basically, uh, you've you've been you're, you're basically a fraudster. Is that what you're you're you're? Uh... That's my unofficial title. That'd yeah. be unofficial. So basically, a fraudster. You've been locked up multiple times. How many times you've been locked up in prison, in state or federal? Um, I've locked up probably about eight times. In state or federal or both? Um, well, I've only locked up one time in federal. Um, multiple time in state, so you know. Because the state you know, gives you, you the little sentence. That's right. They 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 give you. They're the ones that they they set you up for the home run. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um. So all right. So what were all the uh, what were all the different charges you've been charged with? Most of them were like credit card fraud, um, like lying misstatements, like identity theft, right? It, like lying on an application. Yes. So, I saw False swearing. You know. Like if, if, if you get a, a driver's license and give them bad information, they call that false swearing. You know, false swearing to me is frigging. You know, use the word frigging, right. that's a false swear. <laughs> um, he cracks himself up. Always, I do, I do, I really, crack myself up. But I think, you know, like what, what is a false swearing? You know, like I, I solemnly do swear. What's aggravated identity theft? I don't know. I it, 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 How does it become aggravated identity theft? Well, it's like you raped the identity off off of them. That's what wow. it is. <laughs> um, all right. So basically, we're gonna we're not gonna tell your story today. We're just gonna talk about because because we're basically working on writing an outline of of Zach's story. Correct. Which is a, a super cool story, by the way. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but you know, like most stories, it goes here, and then you have to be able to kind of say, okay, well. That's interesting, but it doesn't further the overall story. So we're kind of we're, we're structuring that we're we're writing up an outline, then we're gonna I'm gonna write a whole story. But in the meantime, we, we end up having just a ton of uh, a ton of different uh, different well similar stories involve uh, you know similar stories, and and there's just all these all these separate stories, and then every time we end up having a conversation about something, it ends up being like an hour or two hours. And it goes, well, how'd you do that? Well, I don't understand. What happened here? What happened here? Right. So I thought that would make a cool, like that would make a cool podcast. Like just two guys, two fraudsters, or, you know, I would say con man. Con uh, man. Because, con man. because <laughs> well, because nobody knows what a fraudster is, you know, like it's, my, 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 my. What, what my, about scam artists? So scam like, so the, the names are. Con man. I don't want to say, hey, my name's Matt Cox. I'm a scammer. It does. It's con man's better. Con, con man sounds classy. But what about a uh, scam artist? Scam you know, artist. It's, a you know, that sounds to me skeezy. That sounds like a guy that that does like the three, the 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 um, what is it? Three card Monty. You know, that's, that's what a, it that's sounds. That's a scam like. artist. That's a well, scammer. A it's, scam it's like art, a well, it gives you the artist title, which means you're creative. So yeah, um, short, see, a fraudster sounds like a super villain. You know, like, yeah. this is the fraudster. But con <laughs> man. <laughs> but con, con man sounds like, like to me, a con man is someone who can, it's a, to me, con men run like long cons. Like, uh, uh, but like scam artists do like short cons. They do like three card Monty or they, you know, they pick your pocket. They do well, something. Well, con man sounds like, like swindling someone. Right. You know, whereas... Like okay, so a ske a schemer because I, I got a I, I got a lot of different names. I got like schemer, you know, uh, um, co schemers because they they listed it like co schemers, fraudster, uh, and a scammer, you know. So they they gave me multiple names. So when I look at that, I always wonder. Did you what ever get each mastermind? One... I got mastermind <laughs> in the newspaper. In the newspaper, mastermind. And Actually, I... mine was yes, massa, mine. No, but. <laughs> Black lives matter. No, not a black lives, but just I just thought I'd throw that joke in there. Yes, massa, mine. But I, go ahead. <laughs> right, sorry. But no, I didn't get I got um like the 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 head of the scheme or the, yeah, the guy in charge. Ringleader. Ringleader. That was the that was the term. And that that's circuses. 
circusy to me, you know, like because like a fraud ring, right? You know what I mean? What Makes is it sound that? Like, like tons of people. It could be like three people, but they make it sound like a, a fraud ring could be. But you're saying circusy, like like <laughs> like you're the clown. No. Watch as he makes your watch disappear. This has gone already gone bad. Yes. Um, All right. What, yeah, so, go ahead. So no, so but what do you what would you say? I say con man. What do you say? I, I'd, say I'd say server. I'd say uh, scam scam artist. Yeah, I would. It was mostly your, scams. They, but I, I've heard your. What's going on? Okay. Um, yeah, but your stuff to me that seems short, like a short con. To your scams, although they were quick, like you didn't do anything that lasted. You didn't run any, as far as I know from knowing your story, you didn't do any scams that lasted six months. It was always like. You get the credit card, you go out, you run out the credit card, and it's, it's like within a few days, it's over. Right. Like, for for a particular v- victim or a particular person or whatever we were doing, it was always something we were doing to get money. Right. So it was a, a, a return of money. So it's an idea that returns money, and which is, to me, is a scam. Con artist, is to, to me, is always talking someone out of money. Right. Like, to me, the con is getting someone to legitimately hand you money whereas a scam is to kind of take their rules I, and I use agree. it against them i agree <clears throat> but i i mean i agree with you but i always say con man because that's what people know okay. like if you say scammer you know to me scammers are people that do something on the computer you know yeah. a scam artists or a con artist or, or a scam artist is somebody that's you know it's a short con it's a very quick con and a, a con man is somebody that does a long con like and even though even though all of those are interchangeable whatever we're getting off topic all right the point is uh one, two things one try not to shake the, the desk oh my uh, fault because my mic's gonna bang in uh, uh, secondly um so i thought we would talk about we would just talk about different types of of scams okay so like I was going to, for, for instance, you were, you were doing, one of the scams you were doing was uh, the, um, what, let's not, let's, we'll talk about the one me scam, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, okay, you want to say that for last? Oh, I love, because I love, that's my favorite scam. <laughs> my favorite scam, he, he called, you know, he wasn't me. This wasn't me scam. And I, I love that scam. Um, you know, you can love a scam. Which I, I can love many scams. So, uh, did you ever do the tax scam? What the, do you mean by tax the, scam? The, what they call it, the drop. Do you ever do that on like, you know, where you you get someone's information and you file taxes on uh, for them prior to? Because that's well, huge. I, I, huge. I I dealt with some people who who did stuff like that, but it, that was never my forte. I was I I was kind of always able to assist in that, but I was never like in the midst of that. Right. So that kind of operated ten, tangently. You know whatever I had going on, so that well, never stopped me from getting caught up and accused of it. But right. well, what about, it was a tangently <laughs> occurring. I, I, you know, I'm I'm witnessing as it's going on, and somehow I got accused of being the person putting it together. What about um? You just can't stop jiggling this thing. Oh, I can't. I don't um, get up off of it. So, uh, so what about what what were you were so your your credit card scams were what? Um, it, it, they varied from, um, getting card numbers and the simple of ordering items with card numbers or buying stuff with card numbers. Right. Um, one time what we did was I would take, I had a access to thousands of card numbers and for money, what I did was I would pay people's bills Right. For with with car, stolen card numbers and just get half of what the bill is. So if you had a two hundred dollar electric bill, I'm like, look, I'll pay it with a fraudulent card number and then you just give me a hundred dollars. You know? Never thinking of the consequences that came behind that for the person, you know. It's like so now you end up paying three hundred, but hey, in the short term your lights will be back on. You know what I'm saying? Um <laughs> Let's do the here and now. Let's think about the here and now. What was what was the other one? The other one was uh I know a good one was um the rental car thing. Ugh. The rental the rental car is because the, the 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 security guy. Like I, but, but tell I mean, well, tell us what, what happened. <laughs> what were you doing? All right. Well, so so under under, I so that's why I so let me just say this first. That's why I use the term scam. Why I have different labels, because to me a scam is using their rules against them. Right. Because all organizations, all financial transactions, 
go by certain patterns and they have things in place for security right but usually there's there's a gaping hole in there that I kind of exploit to to use against them so what I was able to do is use the rental cars convenience of um returning customers or gold ring or preferred or the um, rental aisle for national using those convenience they gave the customers against them. What I, what I found is that if you rented a car and, and I had access to someone that made fake IDs, right? I could actually book your rental car twice. So if you rented a car for like three days, I could take your reservation and reset it again and make it for three weeks, like two days after you rented a car. And then if I had a fake ID to kind of match your driver's license number, I could pick that car up and rent it. You so what, try you drive the car for three weeks. Drive the car for three weeks. And I, all I would do is just use your gold ring or your preferred service to the convenience of just picking the car up. And, and what's so funny is I'd pick it up from the same location you picked it up from. Who was, who was this through? All of them. Okay. Hertz. Avis. Um, I, I had a, a penchant for Hertz and the, the, and which turned into Hertz having a, a penchant for me. So, <laughs> so. Well, so real quick. So how where were the credit cards? So how are you figuring out that this customer has a gold? What did you well, I was I myself was a gold member. OK. And what I realized is when I would go and I would pick up my car. When I would take the, the tag that was in the window, because what, what would happen is when I would drive out, the guy would look at my license, look at the tag, and then hand me the tag back, or hand me both of them back. So I said, well, what is he looking at? So when I look, he's looking at the last four digits of my driver's license number. The credit card and all that stuff's on file is irrelevant. So because I have a credit card on file, if I rebook a reservation, it'll use the same credit card Right. And all I would need to get out with the car is an ID that had the last four digits of my number. So okay. that I told myself, I'm like, so if I duplicate because I started out only really doing one state, I only could have California. So what we would do is we would go to the Hertz lot at like 9 p.m. and walk around the gold aisle ring and look, OK, hey. Hey, here's a renter from California. The last four is three, eight, seven, nine. Right. You know, and so we'd write that down and get a. ID with that person's name and the last four is seven, eight, four, nine. And then now I can pick up a car the next day for two weeks. Okay. And what so, were you doing with that? How are, how are you making money on that? I'm renting them out to uh, people who, a street pharmacist who couldn't get rental cars themselves and wanted to look fly. <laughs> so drug dealers renting Escalades. <laughs> yes. So they, they'd say, hey, I'll give you 700 bucks if you can. Absolutely. So then I'd loan it out to them. So what happened was that was so easy and so exploited that what when it all came crashing down, the guy goes, you know, you had 60 vehicles of mine out from one location. Wait, 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 who's the guy? I know who the guy is. Yes. Right. So who, who, what happened? You got a phone call? I, well, actually there was – so this was an addiction. This became – to where I no longer went and got the cars, people who were giving it to dealers, like the phone is ringing, business was booming. So I no longer went and got it, so I hired people to get it, to go pick up the cars. So what happened is my hirees, you know, they had trouble in one spot, so I said, okay, let's go here. Okay, right. they had trouble there, and I said, okay, let's go here. So we just expanded and keep picking up cars. So at one place, I guess they got hip, and they arrested them. Right. So once they got arrested, you know, I, you know, they called me up and I asked them what's going on. And I said, what have you told them? They said, I have told them nothing. What, as John Gordon would tell you, they misspoke. What they meant to say was there's nothing Not I, I haven't, haven't told them. It's a double negative. <laughs> That's right. So I guess they told them who I was and gave them my number. So the person called me. The, 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 the head of security. The for, head of security for, who? for the National for Hertz called me. And I'm on the phone. <laughs> and he was very nice. Right. So he said, so he goes, listen, I'm going to make, he made me a deal. He didn't even know who I was. Right. So he's but he, knew you, he knew you were the ringleader. Yes. 
as you would call it. So, so he told me, he said, all right. He said he was very cordial. So when he called, he called me something. He didn't have my name. I, you know, I went by Zach, but he called me black or tack. It was something similar. So he's like, he goes, hey, I know what you're doing. I said, really, what am I doing? He said, you've got a person on the inside of my company that's turning, giving you information and exploiting our customers. Right. He says. But you don't. That's not true. I, I didn't at all. Right. So he said, I'm going to make you a deal. He said, if you give that person up, I guarantee you immunity that you will not be arrested or charged in this case. <laughs> Can you do that? Right. Like, so I'm saying, well, I mean, I thought about it. I'm thinking yeah. to myself, well, I'll call in tomorrow and say, can I speak with Betty? Betty, what's your last name? <laughs> Betty, I hope you don't have kids that need you. But anyway, <laughs> so he asked me if I would give that person up, right? And I told him I absolutely would not. So You didn't say I don't have anybody? No, I didn't. Like, I was amazed that he thought I had someone on the inside. You know, and he, I said, I'm not, I'm not going to give him up. Right. Then he said, well, you know, I'm going to find you. And I'm going to prosecute you to the full extent of the law. He goes, you, you, you're going to make a mistake. And I told him, I said, no, because I'm done. That same conversation. I said, I'm done. I'm done doing that is what I told him. I'm done with that completely. So, and I gave that up. I was done. I never touched Hertz after that. Yeah. But what happened? You you forgot the part where you gave him a a name or something. You said what your name was. And he went to the, he went to the prison. Well, see (laughs) here, here's the funny part. Well, it gets explicit. Because, like, I was using a name of a buddy of mine that I met in jail, right? right. And I was actually legitimately renting a car, right? <laughs> so I had another friend that needed to rent a car legitimately. I said, well, look, we're going to do it legit. So I said, what I'll do is I'll make you an ID. That's under, legit. Under, That's under, legit. Yeah. That sounds legit. <laughs> well, that was my version of yeah. legit. So I said, look, I'll make you an ID with the name I've been using to rent a car. And they'll just put it on my little $1,000 secure card. Right. So I gave him an ID under my name. He was white. I was black. So when he went to pick up a car, they harassed him. And then the next day I went to pick up a car and they harassed me. So the guy that called said, well, there's a couple of people playing this guy. Right. You got a white guy and a black guy. So he's like... What's going on? So what he did, though, because my friend was still in prison, he went to the prison and interrogated my friend. Actually, he interrogated right, the, him pretty bad. The security, the, the head of, <laughs> head of security. security went to the prison and interrogated the guy saying, we know this. We yeah, know. Like, how did that guy get your information? And he, he had no idea. He had no idea. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, he was a friend, you know. So, you know, what do friends do? Friends steal friends' right, identity. Uh, <laughs> Was friends with a guy named Scott Cugnow who <laughs> and, stole his identity. Yeah, I mean, you know, I cashed mean, about four hundred thousand dollars in his name. He had some friends, questions. I know scam. So we say scammers. You know, we steal friends' identities. We love you. <laughs> when they showed up at Scott's house, they showed him my picture, and he goes, "That's Matt Cox." Really? They go. They, yeah, they, go, they said he immediately. He said. They said he just cashed like four hundred thousand dollars in your name, and he said. He goes, I'll tell you right now, he's going to be hard to catch. <laughs> and it was like, you're not helping me at all. That's God, Matt Cox. That's a, yeah. They said, do you know this person? Yes. Yes, I do. But that's anyway, it. so, yeah, that's the part I always thought was funny. Hey, they but, actually went to the prison. This, the guy from Hertz was, they, oh, they, he must, was, have been, oh, they must have been listen, losing listen. a ton of money. Yeah. Listen, 65 cars. Like, an average Hertz car was 40 grand. This is back... In 2006. So these guys aren't bringing the cars back? No. They were keeping them. They went out and, listen, it the whole experience was nerve-wracking because there, I had so many people out with cars. Like, they would tell me that the police, the police would surround the car. They would lowjack the car. The police would surround the car and wait, right? So two police officers pulled up in these people's yard driveway and just parked by the car waited they're on the phone with me in the house ducked down like the police are out there man i don't know what they're gonna do the police were waiting for the wrecker to come load up the car and leave then the police left 
And they're like, what happened? They go, the police left. They got their car back. So I start getting calls like that every day. Hey, man, the police are outside surrounding the car. I'm Is like, this yeah. at the last three weeks? Like, they don't look for it for like three weeks, right? Something, somehow they identified all the cars that were out at um, some point. In property. Okay. Yeah, they started tracing what was going on. And, and I think what it was is all my rentals were three weeks and above. So they like, they, let's start with all yeah, the three week rentals. Rental. Yeah. yeah, let's start with the three week. And they just start tracing the cars. Hey, did you rent this? No. And then they like, hey, go get our shit. Right. So then they start going out and picking up their car. It was, it was, a, it was a troubling time. It was about a, a, a month and a half period wind down. Right. And, and that's why I rented, I gave my friend that ID. I said, look, we're not going to do it the old way. We're going to do it like this. Just take this ID and rent a car as the guy I've been using. Really, which kind of threw him off because he's like, man, there's two people. There's a black and a white guy doing that. Right. <laughs> you know, what the hell's going on? So, <clears throat> right. What about, what was the, um, shoot, what was the other one? Guy, have, have we talked about uh, this of course, one? It's, 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 of course, you got me here all prepared and ready to go. <laughs> I mean, I was just, well, I was thinking about, um, we were talking about, did, didn't we have talked about creating fake identities at one point? Like, well, I think that was more your your spiel. I wasn't into the creating them. You know, right. I used to borrow them from uh, <laughs> close by associates when I was locked you up. Had told, what was the one scam you told me about, which was, um, was it getting corporate checks? You were getting corporate checks, and yes. then you would go open uh, open a bank account in the name of the corporation. Yes. You just change it a little bit, and yes. then you deposit the check. Yes. How did that work? <laughs> I love this one. Well, all I right, think, I, I, think, could, I think I could tell you the whole. I could tell you the whole story. But I think you just did. I mean, yeah, but you don't. You got to tell. You got to explain the whole. Like you know, there are these um, industrial parks, right? Right, and you would go there, and you would that like they would the the mail would get dumped into like a big bin, one of the big lock right, boxes that's outside. Right. So it's just like when you drop your mail off to the post office, and you stick it in there. They would have these big boxes that. That somebody like, let's say, Coca Cola would would go to pay their vendors, and they would go and they would dump all these checks. This is back when it wasn't electronic. They were just they dump a bunch of checks into this, um, you know, into this box holder, and then the the postman would come. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you would you would get so they would dump all the they dump all the mail into the main bin, and then the postman would come and unload it for the whole park. Right. Right. And, so and, and how I were you guys getting that? So you guys were going and doing what? We, we were taking the checks out of the bin or we had um, mailbox like r retrievers where we could get down into the box or like we would jimmy the box open and steal the mail out of it. So any, anyway, we had access to various companies checks. Um, and one of them, we had one of the large supermarkets um, that wrote a check to um, we had an inside person that worked in in um, Kellogg's that was going to get us a, like a $2 million check that I was planning on getting. And I, I was priming that and everything, getting that ready to go. But basically what I would do would just like, if I got a check in, in for like, let's say Matt Cox industries payable to Zach um, silverware, then I would just start a company with like Zach's fine silverware close to the name. Right. And then just put the check in the account with that, that name and deposit it because what will happen is when the check clears, you're expecting the check to clear. Right. And then the, the real, the real company, they just haven't gotten it yet. Right. So they're expecting to get it any day now. And right. They just haven't gotten it yet. And, and the larger, larger companies can, can wait or they just carry the balance over from 30 to 60 days and say, Hey, and so like, if I deal with you monthly, what will happen is you'll just have a running balance. Right. So if every month you're paying me like 400 to a thousand dollars, then you're just gonna have a balance. So every month you're gonna pay, you're gonna have, and sooner or later I'm like, what the hell's going on, man? Are you gonna ever catch that up? I mean, what's on right, the right. missing check that you that you have? What was the biggest one you ever did? Uh, 60,000. 60, 60,000. So what were the averages? 5,000, 2,000, yeah. 500? No, nah, 5,000 5, would be the, if it was five grand, I, if it was less than five, I wouldn't touch it. So we had one for 60, 60 bands. We had one income tax that was 100,000, but we didn't cash that one. But um, yeah, it's just it, it, in like roofing companies. We had a roofing company, and they got paid a tremendous amount of money. So it depends on what each company do. Most 
Um, that's kind of hard today because everything's ACH draft transfer. But back in the yeah, day, yeah. It, was, it was all checks. It was beautiful. I mean, that's that's not one of the most sexy. No, type, you no, know, that's that's just and and again, that's a scam. That's just using manipulating the system to get around it. You know. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you and I had vastly different, you know, different. Uh, yeah, well, my, mine aren't as, as sexy and elaborate and well, long, I, strong, I, or I on the run. Mine were not on the run, you know. Well, <laughs> you know, I I was buying houses and in in cars. I was doing mine like a job, you know. So <laughs> mine was a job. It was a job. Yeah, would, it's it's some <laughs> I, I, when I when I stopped owning the mortgage company when I when I ended up on probation like that it became my full-time job like i was making fake people i was creating i was borrowing money from the bank i was you know that like that's all i did i mean i did i flipped houses i was always i'm always doing something i'm always doing five or six things right right but I, I don't i don't think you i think you worked it to get a certain amount and then you take that certain amount and then you did what you wanted to do with it i don't think that was your like this was my day-to-day income it's like okay you guys need, and I had people. You guys need to do this because I need to bring this well, in because I got houses. You were a whole enterprise. You were running multiple people. Yes. I, it were, most, most of the time it was just me. And maybe I have this guy to help do this. Maybe he knew. Maybe he didn't. Maybe this guy knew. And, that, you know, one or two. But it was never like eight different people or 10 different people all um, juggling all these different people. It was, it was never really like, and they were all committing crimes. Most of the people I was dealing with were just doing what they normally do. They were, this guy's an appraiser. Exactly. Appraise the house. This guy's a realtor. Give me a contract. So right. most of the time they're doing, they, they know something's up, you know, like, yeah, but they're doing what they normally do. Your whole thing is, you know, you're actually committing, everybody knows it's a scam. Everybody's doing, running different scams, different. Right. You know, I, I love the one where you told me that, you were you had you had the guy that was cashing checks for you, and you were like, he told me that the guy by the he, all he had to do was like go in and cash a check for I forget the amount, but it's like go in and cash this check for five thousand dollars. We have eight checks. Yes, you're, gonna, it's you're gonna talking be, about the guy that, and, and it, he was at Coleman with me, by the way. Oh, really? Yes. He, it, well, he was going to make by the end of the by the end of the day, he would make like he was going to make like like twenty thousand dollars or something, right? And instead. The he very, cashed the one check. One check got five grand. Five grand, right? And I'm like, okay, you're gonna bring me the money. I'm on the phone with him, so I'm going, hey, did you drop that money in that account? He's like, no, I haven't had a chance to yet. I'm like, but you cashed the check right. two hours ago. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. So you know, I'm like, all right, just drop it in there, bro, and then I'm gonna shoot you the next check. Right. You know, and 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 so. Like I go, I've got six of them, so you're 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 gonna make about twenty five grand. Okay, I got you. So call him back. I'm like, dude, so I'm asking him after the third time I called him. I said, hey, look, I said you're not gonna drop that check, are you? Silence. Wow. Nah. He goes, man, I five grand, man. Five grand, you're gonna make twenty five thousand <laughs> by the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, he's like, man, I ain't had five grand in forever. That's what he's telling well, me. You're never, with that attitude, you'll never have 25 grand. Exactly. Never. Exactly. I told him, I said, enjoy it. I enjoy mean, what, it. what about, you told me one time, one guy went in the bank, cashed a check, walked out, and was supposed to come to the car. Yes, and, and he took, took off, off running. Took off running. <laughs> so, walked out, looked over, and saw, saw well, Zach in the... Well, you, you know, I... just took off. I, I dealt, I used to you're deal... you like 25 grand. Just come back to the car. We'll go to the next bank. I, I you worked, know it works. I worked with drug dealers, so they would give me addicts. So addicts are hard to maintain, you know, like, and, and so everyone that worked with me that like upper echelon, you know, like, you know, my wife and the guy that helped me make the photo ID, all them were like, why do you deal with addicts? You know, Cause I'm like, if they could just hold it together long enough, we'll make a fortune. So how long, how long would you deal with somebody when they'll, they're worth a hundred grand to you? They're like, I think I deal with a lot. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But, you know, addicts are just kind of like, you know, I, I can't hold it together. I'm sorry. Sometimes they apologize. Like, I'm, I'm that's what the guy told me. I'm sorry, man. I, I can't wait around for the, the 20 grand. I got to use this five right now. Ridiculous. Makes sense. I mean, I mean you can't go get your high. Until the end of the day. <laughs> you can't hold your yeah. shit together. Until you can't. The end of the day. They, like, I'm sorry, man. I'm just, you know, I, I know you're never going to fuck with me again, but I, I got to go get high. Five grand. You know, I'm like, hey, oh, go, so go get it, go so get sad. it. <laughs> um, because he's the, my my favorite scam. 
is the what in these games. <laughs> like it's, it's it's great. So so I have to you, give a listen, I, you have to give a little bit of a explain this how it kind of like it went from you know you remember the guy you met the guy at like Shoney's it was like that you knew somebody who knew somebody at Bank of America like start at that point. Well, and how you were trying to do one scam, and this guy put you on to the bigger one, and then how you were getting the people, the whole thing. Well, all right. So, um, like, like I can tell you're when it's just when we're just talking, you tell me all the details. You're like trying to jump through it right now. It doesn't matter if we talk for fucking four hours. The, the longer, the better. Okay. Well, I, I don't, this is my first time. Yeah, so, I, you know, I, I got to keep saying that this is my first time. So, all right. So, um, the the explanation is that we we were dealing with with well, I want to call it homosexuals you know if I may say and and we were buying credit card numbers from them and so because one guy worked at at the bank and in the fraud department nice. so what was bizarre about it is when we nice. bought the when we bought the numbers like they'd call up and I think we we're paying fifty bucks a number and they'd have like twenty numbers. So we like one like we meet them with three grand or six grand, and we always paid. So they always hi. They were very nice to my wife. They loved her. So anyway, every time he'd meet us, he would say, "Park over here, and I'm gonna get out of my car and walk all the way over." But there's somebody in my car. And so and and I'm like, well, why can't we just park next to you? Oh, because the my boyfriend in the car works in the fraud department. He doesn't want to be seen. Like he doesn't want them to get pictures of him meeting us. So, so I said, what? He goes, yeah, my boyfriend works at the fraud department. Of right. Bank so the America. guy you were buying from, he didn't, he worked at the bank, but not in the fraud department. Right. Fraud department. Okay. Or, or he, I think he worked at a hotel. So they, they were both bouncing off. He said, works at the fraud department. So I asked him, I said, listen, tell your boyfriend, I'll pay him five grand. If he would just give me one hour to just ask him about the bank. Right. He's like, really? I go, yeah, I'll give him $5,000 if I can sit down and talk to him for an hour. So I made him the offer and he accepted it. So we sat down one day and I'm asking him all the fantasy, because I had fantasy questions and I had them written down, like about 25, like front and back. And I'm going through all of my, okay, I'm thinking this. And if I'm writing this check, what's the policy on this? What's about, and, and he's like, no, that wouldn't work because of da, 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 da. He's answering them all honestly. So we met about, about an hour. So as he kills most of what I have down, I'm writing notes and everything. So my last question is, is there something that you notice that's a loophole that I didn't ask you, right? And he said, well, <sighs> he goes, one day I had a guy who called me up and went to the ATM machine and got $1,000 out of the ATM machine with the PIN number, right? And he was telling me that it wasn't him that got the money. But I'm like, but that's an ATM machine that you, that gets used like every Thursday right next to your house right. religiously. By you. Right. Right. But you're telling but me. This the, time it wasn't me. Yeah. Right. The guy, and the guy got angry and said, listen, if I tell you I didn't take the money out, I didn't take the effing money out. So he said, I gave him the money back. And I didn't catch it. But I said, what do you mean? He's like, that's bank policy. He says, the first time anything is taken from you, our policy is we give you the money back, regardless of whether we believe you or not, whether it can be proven that it might have been you. He said, the first time we absolutely do it. The second time, if we're suspicious, we'll still give you the money back, but we'll close your account. Right. But that's that's actually also... That's the, the EFT policy from the federal government. That's, well, I didn't like learn they, that until I was in prison. Right. But they have to give it back to you. Right. Like, like that, that concept of it being the law would came to me when I was in prison. Right. So when he told me that, I'm like, huh. So when we were leaving, like it's processing in my head. And I, I turned to my wife and I'm like, do you hear what he said? You know, and she's like, no, I was drinking cocktail. But so I said, <laughs> He basically said that if we pull money out of our Bank of America account and you tell the bank that wasn't you. Right. They they would give the money back. She goes, You think it'll work? I'm like, let's give it a shot. So we left. This was a anyway, it was a a Tuesday morning or lunchtime. I forgot when it was. It was the day that he was off. And we left there, went to the post office, and bought four thousand dollars worth of cashier checks where you could use your money debit orders. card. Money, money orders. orders. Yeah. yeah, money orders. 
and they gave us the four grand worth of money orders, right? And so my wife, when she opened the account, she was very close because she talked to the lady. We left the post office, went straight to her bank, and she went in and she talked to the lady that opened her account and said, hey, you know, somebody got $4,000 transaction. So the lady looked, oh, I'm sorry. She could cut up her card, processed her account, said, look, I ordered you another card. It'll be here tomorrow overnight. You'll get it tomorrow, right? And I went ahead and put the $4,000 back in your account. So you're good to go. Nice. So, so she I look at four, her. She got the $4,000 in money orders. Right. And she got the 4000 back. So right. she just made four grand. Right. And so you know what my wife did? She signed the four one thousand dollar money orders and deposited in the account with in the, the lady. same account. <laughs> just, I'm like, that's I think they're ballsy or stupid. <laughs> it's 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 ballsy. You're like, hey, stroke them. <laughs> You're talking to oh. <laughs> so, so, so what happened? So, so we went outside. It, it expands from there. Right. So we went outside, high five, went straight to the house, had sex, and like it's on. <laughs> so it was on. So my mind's running, so that's what we do. So I said, okay, so let's open up accounts and we'll pull the money and say it wasn't me. Now, when you do it in the same city, when it's feasible that it wasn't you, and sometimes the bank would give a little blowback, Right. I found people buckled. So, you know, because I because it wasn't ever me doing all that. So I would hire dope addicts, reliable dope addicts, and when they got a little flack, they 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 folded like Superman on laundry day. <laughs> so, so 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 when they got a little bit of money, <laughs> no, they got a little flack. I don't when, know what was. Oh oh fl- oh okay okay oh when when they got when when the right bank when the quite, bank would bank be quite, like hold up like you know okay. like hey you know uh, somebody took this doesn't make sense uh, something's yeah, wrong here yeah like right. let me go talk to somebody go oh, no 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 never mind never mind I think my wife did it I'm out of here don't worry about it. you know what I'm All saying right. so when they got a little ha- hassle they they been. They would right. they would give in, yeah, you know, yeah. or they would leave, or I'm like, what happened? Oh, they know, they yeah. know it wasn't. You know, like, right. yeah, <laughs> you know. Oh so. yeah, like, like that. That was the big thing with me. Like, I'm ready to argue. Like, yeah. as soon as they, whenever the the bank would ever give start to give me a hard time, I would immediately say, all right, I want to talk to the manager. All right, no, absolutely not. Yeah, no, no, that's look. I don't know what you're thinking, but I mean, because I, but that's because I knew what they knew. Right. And like you know, you're talking to some drug addict who's already on edge yeah, so, and doesn't really understand how the system works. So as soon as they say something, he's ah, yeah, runs they, out of the yeah, bank. Okay. They, they would like, that doesn't make sense. Or, or how did the person get your pin number? Ooh, he asked me how the guy got my pin number. I'm like, you don't you know. Don't know. <laughs> right. We've had this conversation. Yeah, th- right? Thank you. Yeah. So, and so in my mind, I said, okay, so this is happening. Like it, it went from, well, actually it never was a hundred percent because it probably went from about 80 to 70% down to about 20%. They just started giving flack. So in my mind, I said, I have to overcome the flack. Right. Like, I have to make it where there's no question. That this it was, could not have been. It, it could not have been you. Right. So I start thinking to myself, what if, because I had someone that was showing me that he could duplicate the card. Right, right. Like, by putting the information on the back of a on, of M- a card I have. MSR 205 machine yes. where they just swipe it and they yes. get another card and they put the information back on the magnetic strip. So now you got two cards. Right. So I said, well, because this is all what's coming to be. So when that happened, I said, well, I wonder what would happen if I sent someone to like Columbus, Ohio. Right. And they opened up a couple of bank accounts and we deposit five grand in three accounts, one person. And then I had my guy in Atlanta go into the post office and buy five grand worth of money orders, right? And then my friend go into the bank and say- 10 minutes later. 10 minutes later and say, what the- In, in, what'd you say, Chicago, what'd you say? In in, in Columbus, Ohio. In Columbus. And say, hey man, I had five grand in here. They're like, well, you just made a large withdrawal in Atlanta, Georgia. Five minutes ago? When was that, 10 minutes ago? And like, they oh say, oh, that was 10 minutes ago in Atlanta. Well, I've been here. What are you yeah, talking about? Yeah, like, like, I, you think I'm Superman? Right. No, I don't. I'm actually going to cut off your card and, and they give them the money back. So I went from having flack at 70% and people buckling All right. to Ew. them like, oh, my God, you've been frauded. Right. <laughs> 
You, Mike, let me hurry up and give you your money. <laughs> you poor thing. Yes. Yes. So that's how I was rolling that for a while. That actually never crumbled on me. It just, I think uh, my arrest was the interruption. But <laughs> So how, okay. So here's the part that I like. How did you get the people that at some point you couldn't get enough drug addicts to be doing this? And you were doing this on a scale. I know you were doing this on a scale where you're sending three guys to Ohio, three yes. guys to Illinois, three guys to you know Arizona, to te- like all over the country, two or three guys here. Where are you coming up with? This is the part I love. Where are you coming up with? Like, What was your thought process and how did you eventually figure out where to come up with guys that are willing to do this? Um, well, the guys willing to do it, uh, you're talking about the people. So what, what I was, basically what you're saying is my supply chain. Yeah. All right. So my supply of people to go in came from drug dealers. Right. You know. You're, you're jiggling. The t- you're leaning. You're, I'm, I'm all on the chair, though. I'm not. No, you're not. <laughs> You are not. You're like you're leaning. No, no, my the, hand. Your, your microphone's back going like this. It's I mean, my hand on the table. Okay, well, you go get white. All right. All right. Okay, Stop. so. Breathe. Okay, my supply of people came from drug dealers. Right. Okay, my supply of individuals to open up accounts in their name yes. came from people incarcerated. So I had a chain of identities that I was buying out of people locked up. Right. So I would actually have people who were locked up and I would pay like a thousand dollars if the people locked up would sell me their identity. Right. And so I use them to give. So what I would do is if you've never had a bank account, I would take your identity, go get an ID in your name, go get a social security card, travel, send someone to another state and city to open up three bank accounts in your name. Of those three bank accounts, we would deposit money, and then I would steal the money, and you'd say, hey, it wasn't me. Right, so each, once, they got the, once they got the debit cards issued. Right, once they got the debit card. And so we, we used to do PO boxes, we started just doing apartments. So we'd send three people up there, they'd rent an apartment, and they'd live, like I'd pay the rent for like two, two or three months, and once we got all the debit cards, so each person would do three, so you got three times, Three. Three is a nine times five grand. Right. So $45,000. $45,000. Each one is worth 45 grand. Yeah. Yeah, but what about the the arraignments? What do you mean? Remember, you would go to. The, oh. That's what I meant. Not the drug deal. I meant when you would go and sit in the court. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're talking. Okay. Yes. At, at some point. Like, I mean, I understand you, it wasn't all the people you were getting, well, but it was. It was well, you know, it. that that was. All right. So I'm not going to say that was. I did that a couple of times okay. because I'm like, these drug dealers are ridiculous. Right. Not drug dealers. These drug users are ridiculous. They were they were. I have story after story about dealing with them, like because you'd fly them out of town and put them in a hotel. And then, you know, and I had companies set up where I would pay for their hotel like a corporation. And I had a gentleman call me up and say, are you human resources? And I'd be like, yes, sir. He goes, listen, man, I don't, he goes, I I don't know how to tell you this, but I think your employees are on drugs. And I'm like, what? He goes, crazy. Yeah. He goes, "Um, the girl that was here was walking around the hotel topless. Like we had to have security. He goes, I think they're on drugs. (laughs) So I mean, the stories go on and the on. When they sold the rental car. Oh, are you talking about the the three girls that I I picked up? One I, don't, I just remember Listen. one time. One time they called and they said like the, the, the they screaming. called you and they said that they had the rental, sold yeah, the, rental the, the rental car. car. The guys got the rental car. I don't know what to do. They're screaming and hollering. And I hung up the phone and it, it was a prepaid phone and I just had it disconnected. I'm like, okay, that it, it was the it was horrible. Um, the, the stories were horrible. Dealing with drug addicts was horrible. So sometimes I got impatient with that. So in my mind, I like, how do I recruit criminals, right, that are willing to commit crimes that may or may not be on drugs? Like, where would I see those criminals? Right. How do so, I come across them? Right. Guys? So I'm like, maybe in jail. So what I was thinking, like, I'm thinking back on my first appearance. You know, first appearance is the, they give the resume of your priors. Yeah. So I. Off you. He's been arrested for this. He's yes. Been arre- like, because you're trying to get bond. 
And so they're like, he's been incarcerated twice for, you know, uh, uh, for for fraudulent checks. Uh, he's been arrested yes. uh, twice for or three times for credit card fraud. He's been, so that, you're, you know, you're sitting there. <laughs> You know, you're you're sitting there thinking. I went with the exactly. Right. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm gonna go down to a first appearance. I'm trying to remember what. I, somehow I was at a first appearance. I don't know if it was an arrest of mine, or if I had to go to somebody's first appearance because I was gonna buy, or I hired them an attorney. I don't remember what the situation was, but I was at a first appearance and I'm listening to what's going on and I'm like, huh. What was that guy's name again? I remember thinking that to myself, like, what was that guy's name again? So I decided, like, I'm going to go and sit at the first appearance, here, which has nobody but lawyers, which had nobody but lawyers. So I went in there with pen and paper, and I'd write down female or male, right? And I'd get their chart. Oh, perfect. Oh, perfect. No drugs, you know, checks, you know. And so I would write down names, and generally I got about two or three for per first appearance and I waited. I gave them like two or three weeks to see if they bonded out. If they bonded out or got OR, I didn't pursue them because- but Typically they're not going to. If they have a list of charges, it's difficult right. to get bond. Like well, this, this and, and, and somebody- they want get, a lot of money. Somebody that gets bonded out really doesn't believe you. Like if, if everything by me was trial and error. So if you got bonded out, I still tried to approach some people. And they were not very receptive, you know what I'm saying? Or like, like, because of the way I talk, a lot of times when I approach people because of the way I talk, they think I'm the police. Right. That's happened to me numerous. I've, I've had people run from me. Or I've had a guy that a friend referred said, stop the car. Fuck you and got out of the car. Right. So we're looking and I'm looking at the friend like, what, what happened? So she goes and talks to him. She goes, oh, he thinks you're the police. <laughs> I'm like, what? But anyway, me, moi. But, so um, dealing with those people, like people who got bonded out was difficult. So if they were still in prison, I would send them $100 or I'd send them a letter and $100. And I'd say, hey, I'll bond you out. Right. You know, um, like I would act like I was a friend of theirs because I was able to pull their information. And I would say, hey, um, I want you to work with this such and such. Hey, I'm a friend of John. Yeah, John, I got the money to bond you out, but if I bond you out, I want to know if you could do this for me. Right. And they'd I be like, you said everybody knows a John. Yeah. <laughs> and he'd be like, well, what do you need me to do? Well, like, if you can do this, this, and this, I'll pay you this much. They go, are you serious? And I would always have them go somewhere close by where we could drive them and, and do it. It worked out for like three people out of about 15, they, they became pretty decent workers, but most, most of those people were on drugs. It was, it was a clever idea, but it was just another link to people on drugs. That's all right. it was. But it was a clever idea, but it, 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 it works pretty good. I know you like that idea. I love that. I love <laughs> that going and sitting in the sitting there and just listening to, okay, this guy would probably do it. Just writing <laughs> down the information, then you mail him a letter with the thing. Or, you know, I, I, um, I remember you said uh, one time you guys stuck like, your wife went into where their property was. You went, she went into the property unit, or was it once or how many times, and actually left them like a cell phone with a phone oh, number. Yes. Said, and so yes. you can go in. Like if you get arrested, that's Colby. So if Colby gets arrested, <laughs> we can go. I can then turn around the next day and I can go to go to the property section of the sheriff's department and, and say, look, and leave him a cell phone. Colby is yeah. Colby's in. Uh, you know he's in jail, but he's going to get released in a couple of days. I want to leave his cell phone in his property, and they'll go sure. And they'll take the cell phone and stick it in his property. Yes. So three days later, when you get bond and you get out and you get your property, there's a cell phone in there. So it could be a cell phone. You can leave whatever. Here's so I need to give him some money or here's his credit cards. He forgot his wallet. So you can leave whatever you want in there. So when these guys get their stuff, they've got, they're like, okay, here's a cell phone. I'm supposed to call this number. Yep. And they call the number and he'd say, yeah, this go is meet me. me at the hotel, go down the street, walk across the street and whatever. I got you a rental car and da 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 da. I mean, right. Of course, you know how I got the rental car. I mean, it was all bleeding. <laughs> it, it, all, it all the circles linked that's, into that's, one. Like, that's what bothers me. It's like, it's like the guy, um, uh, was it Chris? The, ring, the ringleader. Aaron, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's the problem. It's Chris, it's the Chris, is it Arano or Aronog or something? I forget. The guy who was running the um, the credit card ring in, in L.A. To me, it's like there's like 
he kept paying for, he's running this huge credit card ring where they're manufacturing credit cards. They're, they're hacking into systems, manufacturing or counterfeiting credit cards, putting the information on the credit cards, coming up with fake IDs. They've got girls that go in and buy tons of merchandise and then they're selling it. And he gets busted because he ends up renting a hotel room using a fake credit card. Hmm. And it gets denied. It's like, wait, you guys are upstairs on the top floor of the, of the hotel in a room with all of your equipment and you're using a stolen credit card. What if it doesn't go through? What if they call? What if the cops show up? What, like, why don't you spend your own money? Like, this is a minor, it's a, it's a minor charge for the hundreds of thousands you're making. You're trying to save money on a $100 room. What are you doing? And that's what happened. His whole ring gets busted because he, he gave him a credit card. It didn't go through. Gave him another credit card. It didn't gave, go through. Gave him another credit card. It went through. But now the, the clerk is suspicious. So then they end up calling the credit card manufacturer company, the merchant, and saying, something's not right. This guy used like multiple credit cards. And this one went through. It, who, who's this credit card under? And they gave it to him, and it's not the same guy. They call the sheriff. Sheriff comes up, bangs on the door, opens the door. They're sitting there making credit cards. You know, hey, what's up? You know, they're cranking out credit cards. The sheriff's like, what are you doing? He walks in. The whole thing, this thing just stopped. Wow, that was in the fast 30 minutes. Yeah, it goes flies by, bro. <laughs> like at some point I I'll get some point we'll like if this takes off, then we'll have to get we'll get the cameras that just go for hours. It's like you just <laughs> turn them on, they just go and go. go. Like you there's a way with enough money, you know, with a couple two, three thousand dollars, you can get this up so that you're it's just seamless. Um so yeah, so he so, yeah, so the, the sheriff walks in and he sees him just cranking out the credit cards. It's, it's over. It's like all because you, it's the same thing with, the, with like the car things. Like you're using all these, like to me, all of those, every, you're juggling a lot. If anything goes wrong, the whole thing comes down. Like to me, you know, like to, to me, I, that's like I would be paying for like to me to get the $100,000. i will i will spend five grand of my own money to get the 100000 you know? So, well. Well, I, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to down you. I'm not, I'm I'm not, not trying to I'm, fault you. Man, I'm not, you listen, I'm not taking, this, it, this I'm not taking it as fault. It's, it's because I was willing to do that, but the people I was dealing with wouldn't allow me to do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, like, so stealing the rental cars or wrecking the rental cars, right. you know, it just, it Getting came. the cops called. To yeah, the to the hotel, you know, and, and like, wow, you guys are strung out on drugs. And it, it, it was horrendous. The people I was dealing with were, were horrible they were horrible so it, it just I'm you know what's weird is like parts of me in my life now I'm like I'm very happy I don't have to deal with that type of because that used to drive me nuts like oh. that it felt like I had to deal with those people didn't make any money they were they were horrible they were horrible yeah and and so they would like I told you getting getting the police call it at the hotel or they would turn in a rental car you know, in the rental car company called me you know, like, hey, this, uh, the front end of this car is smashed. <laughs> so I'd call the guy and like, hey, they, the rental car company said the front end of the car is smashed. I'm like, what? That's crazy. I don't, I didn't see any, any scratches on it when I turned it in. Drug really? addicts. Right. I'm like, really? Yeah, okay, uh, you're fired. Yeah. <laughs> when you get back into town, don't, don't even bother calling me. I, you know, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky. I, everybody, like, everybody I was dealing with were, like, you know, professional people. They would still get scared. Like, you know. Well, scared, scared is one thing. All right. High is different. Yeah, high, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I dealt with basically most, you know, everybody I was dealing with were, like, professional people. And, and they were basically doing what they do. Um, and the few times I dealt with people were, but I was basically, I was, for the most part, I was the one who was taking, who was, well, no, I was going to say, I almost never went in. Like it wasn't until when I went on the run that I really started going into the bank and going and doing everything myself. Like, you know, b b before that it was, no, you go in. No, 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 no. Here's the card. Here's this. You go in and get this. You go in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so that's true. But then when I was on the run, it was just, I'm there. I'm already wanted. Well, I might I, as well go in. I, I, the, the problem, and that's an issue because I would do it, 
or my wife and I would do it, and ours was always flawless. So I'm yeah. like, oh, this is. Well, you know, because it's listen, they can feel that confidence. They can feel when you're talking about think about what this guy did. He gets into a car. He's already jonesing for drugs. And you say, take this. Your name is Tom Jones. Walk in. Tell him I'm Tom Jones. Give him this and tell him you want cash. You know, that's really all they know. So you you would it would take an hour or two to really explain the scam for that person to feel confident enough to walk in. And when they say, well, I don't understand. Mr. Jones, when was the last time you used your credit card? Like right then they go, huh? And they run where if it's you, you're like, I have no idea. I mean, what, what, what? you know what I'm saying? You'll, you're like, ready to start arguing. Yeah, like, what, I got ID. I got this. Give me the, I don't know. My wife has my card. I don't, like I'm ready to start. Oh, give me. <laughs> jump over. Where's jump the manager? Over, jump over the counter. <laughs> yeah. Listen, give me my money. Right. I don't know what's happening here. I want my, you know. In fact, give me my stuff and your manager. Yeah, I'm closing name. the account. I want to close the account. <laughs> Give me a cashier check then. I don't care. I mean, I, look, they're just like, now they're upset. They're us now. They're, I'm ready to argue. But yeah, if you're some drug addict, you're scared to death. Yeah, and, and, and that was the issue. So the, dealing with them was, was the, like what I'm saying, that was the, the problem. So all of my plans were always around like what I know what could be done. And then watching someone else, you know, like I'm like, this is, this is flawless. And watching someone insert flaws in what I thought was flawless. Like, oh, oh my God. So it was, it was, it was, it was troubling. So I just started saying, well, it's not worth, because when they wreck a rental car, that's twenty twenty thousand dollars $20,000. So you send someone on a trip and you make 60 bands and you're or $60,000 and you're paying them. And now you got to pay 30, 40 for a rental car. I'm like, had that been in, in such and such his name, then it wouldn't matter. Right. I wouldn't be paying that. So I'm just, it was just too much risk. It was too much risk. Right. Information. He was getting their information. Then he was going, he was calling and like, I forget who it was, Capital One, whoever was offering like AT&T, whatever. So they were offering a card that once you got accepted, they would overnight it to you. And that, and in their mind, they were thinking, you know, AT&T or whoever, let's say it was at Capital One, they're thinking, well, we're going to overnight it to their house. So one, they're calling us and applying for the loan or for the credit card from their home phone. We know the home phone is connected. Like we can look in our system and that number is, goes to this house. So then we're overnighting the, then they gave us the same address. So we know it's them. We got their pull it. They got like not 800 credit scores. So we're gonna overnight this twenty or thirty thousand dollar credit card to them. Right. Then when they activate it, they have to activate it from the home phone also. Well, remember the spoof card? Yes. Or spoof app. So this guy's using the spoof app, and the way they figured it was, yeah, but still we're overnighting it, we're sending it to them, mm -hmm. and they have to sign for it. So this guy's pulling up in his Lincoln Town Car, or sorry, in his Cadillac, and he knew they're overnighting it. It's coming today. So he would pull up and wait, sit in his car for an hour or two. And he said, when I see that he'd see the FedEx thing, he'd hop out of the car and start walking up the front driveway. And FedEx guy would, you know, cause the FedEx guy pulls up and he starts filling out some paperwork. Then he gets the, the package. And then, so then when he walks up, you're standing at the front door or you're walking out or you're walking up, getting the garbage cans or whatever. And he would see you and he'd go, you know, you know, nobody's home. Or even if there's a car in the driveway, nobody's looking out the window. So he would be like, he'd go, hey, uh, Mr. Johnson? Uh, yeah, what's up? Yeah, John. Yeah, I'm, I'm John Johnson. Oh, can you sign for this? Sure. They don't ask for ID. He no. signs for it. They give him the fucking card. He takes the card. He sits back in his car. And then he calls with the fucking spoof app and activates the card. He then turns around and goes, it's gas. Make sure it's working. It's going through great. Then he turns around and boom, Rolex. You know, just boom, boom, boom. Just starts running it up. He was making a fucking killing. This guy Bozjak was doing this, did the same thing multiple times, but this guy did it to such an extent that at one point he actually got a card for like fifty grand in the name, it, and it was a U.S. attorney. Oh, I think you told me about that. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was like they didn't give a shit. He said went on for a year or so. He said did it for a year or so. He was just listen. This guy was ridiculous. He had. His teeth were all gold and diamonds. I black mean, guy? Just, no. No, a white guy with gold and diamonds. Yes, of course it was a black guy. Um, 
So uh, I can tell. Right, go ahead. I, I can tell you some white guys. I've met that. some white guys. A couple. Okay. Very okay. few though. No, ain't no very few. <laughs> Them wiggers. But go ahead. <laughs> so, but yeah, he was. Uh, he he he. They they went after him with vengeance. I mean, they tracked him down. They it was with. But after they ran that thing up, he it was two weeks later, two three weeks later, a month later, he they had him smashed him. Oh, he. That means he went to the U.S. Attorney's house. Yeah, that's exactly. He didn't realize it was a U.S. attorney. Like, the, it was just an attorney. He's like, I, I knew he was an attorney. He didn't say U.S. attorney. He was just an attorney. He's like, so I'm like, oh, what do you do? Oh, I'm an attorney. He's like, because the information I was given was just that he's a lawyer. What was he buying the information online on the uh, dark web? I think, I think he had somebody at a bank or something like that. It's, it's amazing how many of these people at the banks. Will will give you information. They the banks have started limiting the information that their employees oh, have yeah. access to. Yeah, because it was it used to be. Whew. So are, are we, we recording? recording? No. Oh. Well, fuck! You didn't mention it. So yeah. what? We're talking. Oh, okay. I, <laughs> well, I'm way back here. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I wasn't thinking. I just told the whole story now. I was ready to tell the whole story again. Uh, to tell the whole story again. Well, I can't. He just he was recording the whole time. I didn't realize you were recording. Yeah. Did you get it from the beginning? Once you guys, I don't know where I started. Once, I, once you guys started talking, I just got clicked all the cameras on. I saw that. So for the last five minutes. Yeah, that's oh, okay. Fun. That's fine. Whatever. So yeah, so that was a guy I knew I had met in prison, and he wanted. I want to say his name was. Um, Last name was like Jefferson or Jeffries. Uh, yeah, he he's funny. He left prison. He left, and like a year and a half, two years later, he came back. It was just a violation, I think. Well, oh. what had happened was he got pulled over. Let me do this. So he got pulled over, and when they searched the car, first it wasn't his car. But when they searched the car, there were credit cards in random people's names. When, of course, when they check out the credit cards, they're stolen. But his right. whole thing was, it's not my car. <laughs> and so they couldn't really charge him. Like, they charged him if they had to drop the charges because right. you didn't catch the person driving the car. And he says it's not him. And the other guy says it's not him. So what are you going to do? But, of course, they were – But yeah, but you were caught. You were pulled over by the police. You were arrested. You were charged. You were. They dropped the charges. But – you violated because you were in, 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 you had interaction with the police, and we don't believe that you didn't know. And so they violated him. He gave him like eight months or a year, like the remainder of his probation. They had him. He did it like eight months in prison or something like that. And uh, I remember the whole time he's like, "They can't do that. They can only give me this." Much. But the fact is, is eight months. By that point, it's too late. Yeah. Like there's nothing you you can't fix anything in eight months. No, not so, with him. So he did the remainder of the. Eight, six months or nine months, whatever it was, in prison, and he got out, and, and that was it. But yeah, he he came back. Uh, he was a, uh, but he was he was he was sharp. Like he really had it down. He had a bunch of different scams like that. <laughs> well, you you have to have um, to do something like that. You got to have multiple hustles. You're not you're, you're generally not going to just do one thing. And and it's all right. And, Is that and you or me? That that's matter. me. Bible verse. All right. Anyway, <laughs> Dominus Omen. But anyway, generally you you start your your circle starts intertwining with other people, meaning like the information that he would need to pull that off means that he's dealing with either someone selling that information or getting like credit card numbers or giving him bank accounts. So chances are he was doing multiple things with that type of information. So he, I don't know if he had. Did he? I wonder. Like, I don't know if he had somebody who could make fake IDs. I remember at one point he was talking about, I was talking about, because I remember at one point I told him about, about Boziak. Right. Uh, this guy wrote a story. You like Boziak. I, right? love, I love his story. Um, so, but because but, he did all kinds of different stuff, you know. Uh, like well, it sounded like he was doing just one thing. Who, Boziak? Well, yeah. He, no. was, he, was, he was a scammer. He was a uh, scammer is what they call it. No, no, no. He was, he was counterfeiting credit cards. Well, ultimately, he counter—he was manufacturing, he was making it. But, I mean, he started carding, and then it went. Then he stopped doing that because he was like, I, his brother gets arrested twice. He gets grabbed one time. I mean, so he's like, I'm going to get caught eventually. So then he just starts manufacturing 
counterfeit credit cards and selling them online. He's like, because then all I have to do is take the order, I make the cards, and then I just drop them in a drop box. Like, there's no chance I'm getting caught. Right. So, but, but what I was going to say is, like, he was buying his information on, like, the forums. So he, people would either provide him the, inform- the dumps, the, you know, the dump of information. They'd either provide it w- to him, or he would, when he was doing his own stuff, he would buy it. So you have these big breaches where, where somebody, you know, where some Russian hackers come in and they, they, they crack, you know, Citibank and they get 40,000, you know, people's information. You can buy that information. So he would buy it and then put it on the cards and, and he would use the cards. And he, of course, could, he could make, like, he could make the actual, um, the actual driver's license or their IDs or something. Um, I remember when we were talking one time, and you know, like to me, where I would when how I was getting my information was I was just running an ad, I was just running an ad in the newspaper. I thought for three hundred bucks or five hundred bucks, I'd run an ad in the in the Flyer magazine or whatever, and say good credit, bad credit, no problem. You know, home loans available. You know, call now, free applications, and put the phone number. People call up and they give me everything because they think they're applying for a loan. Right. I take their information. <coughs> you know, I take their information and then I order their. I'd order their social security card, their birth certificate, their high school transcripts, or I'd, I'd register to vote in their name, and then I'd you know, go get a, a driver's license or an ID from the DMV. Like, everything was real. You know, everything he's got is fake. Like, to me, that's terrifying. Yeah. Right. But, you know, you're walking in, and, like, to me, I'm ready to argue with you because everything I know you. you it's all right. Real. Right. That's a real social. That's a real driver's license. The credit cards that I'm now using are credit cards that I actually applied for and had sent to me. Right. Like the real person doesn't know anything about this and did, there's no way for them to stumble across it, especially when I started doing it with homeless people. Right. Started surveying homeless people. Like now there's no way that the guy that was living under the bridge in Nevada knows that I'm using his, uh, have an ID in his name in North Carolina right. and that I'm buying, I've got a, Ten thousand dollar credit card or a, a sixty thousand dollar car in his name. He has no clue. Like, right. So if you're sitting there, something's not right. What? Like I'm ready to argue with you because there's no <laughs> way you track that guy down. Right. Nobody's complaining. Oh, well, we've got a call. We're gonna call uh, Bank of America. Call him. Let's ro- yeah. run it. Run yeah, it. Let's right. Let's do it. So, but yeah, but like stuff that he was doing, I'd be terrified. So the stuff that you were doing, I'd be terrified. There's a real person out there. You know, right. a lot of. Stuff I, ours was similar, right? Well, I mean, sometimes you're taking someone's real, you're taking a real person with good credit. Sometimes, right? Yeah, like that they, was they could figure it out. That was earlier, right. and and that was that was the bane of most of my arrest. Yeah, it is because like one point I'm in jail and I'm I'm walking and I'm saying, okay, this isn't working. Right. Taking people's information and using it is is shutting down on me at the most inopportune times and ended me up in jail. Right. You know, and, and I walked around, I said, okay, so I need to better scam. Right. Yeah. I need to stop using people who are going to call on me. Right. You know, and that's when I realized the people who aren't going to call the police on me have, have had the police called on them. So they're, they're here <laughs> <laughs> with so, me now. So, you know, so, so that, that's what changed me up because that was that was a, a problem. And no matter how well it was going, it, it would end. It, it never, none of them ever ended w- when I was done. They all ended when I needed them the most. Right. Like so, all, all of those cards. So what about, so what were the scams, what, what were any scams you came across in prison that people were doing? Okay, so um, there's some I was impressed with and some I wasn't so impressed with. Like um, I met someone that was doing skimming and I was kind of impressed with that, understanding it. But then I wasn't impressed because he would just make the cards, buy gift cards and then sell the gift cards and then get the money and spend on what he wanted to spend it on. So, you know, I just thought that was like redundant. Right. So it, it was. But I was impressed because I didn't know how to make the card, you know, so right, 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 right. knowing that you were running that, even though I did that a little bit, copying the debit cards and the pen. I never did it to the level where I was like he was doing manufacturing cards. But um, have you heard about the people who convince elderly people or um, 
I want to just say white people because this I find it to be horrible. I can already tell this is uh, horrible. With the green dot to go and buy green dot reloads. Have you have you heard about that? No, but I met a guy that was doing a a, a scam that was – and it basically he, the people he was hitting were like elderly people. Yes. And I was going – I mean, and they were, and it was a, it was a, um, oh God, it was a timeshare, like a timeshare scam that he was hitting. You're not hitting. talking about Barrington, are you? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this was, uh, no, but anyway, you were saying, what was he doing? Well, he, he would convince people that, that they had a, a warrant out for not paying taxes or that. And, and he'd say, listen, you've got a warrant. We're coming to pick you up. You need to go down to your nearest Walgreens and get a $700 reload on Green Dot. Right? And he's telling me that. I'm like, no Nobody way. Would do that. Would no do way. That. And when I read his paperwork, people did that. And, and I said, so you would just trust them to go do that and call him? He's like, trust them? I never got off the phone with him. And you'd hear him, Sally, I, I can't do that. Now I gotta go down to Walgreens and get a five, seven hundred dollar, give me my card. Yeah, and they stay on the phone. Just let me stay on the phone with you. Go up to the clerk and pay. You know, I wouldn't have believed that until I got out and I went to buy a Walgreens reload and they ask you, is anyone telling you to do that? Yeah. It that scam was so huge that even Green Dot had to intervene to stop it. People buying reloads for prepaid cards, right. being oh, scammed. It's it's, it's like it's, I go, that is unbelievable. Like that, I'm like, you know, I mean, you don't want to say like that. Like, how could you be that stupid? Because they're elderly people, and and you're you're older, and so if you're older, then you're you're more susceptible to just be trusting. But wow, I mean, it's, that's, to, that's to, for me to call you up and say, hey, we, we were talking about someone. What was it we were talking about? Like, there's no way I would have fell for that. You know, we, oh, yeah, yeah. What was it? Was, it was, it was, it was, I got hired by a Vice TV. Vice TV was doing a, um, they are doing commercials for uh, T-Mobile. And they're, they're, they were doing phone scams. So they, they had to interview me. They were interviewing me as an expert on scams. Right. And the scam, like they were saying, like, what are these people doing wrong? The problem is all the scams that they gave me to review, the people... Like they were typically like foreigners, like like the people that were falling for it. It was like, okay, well, no American would fall for that unless they were elder. I'm saying, no, we gotta know the scam. Okay. The scam was like your mother's been in an accident, and you know your mom's been in an accident. She's in the hospital. She needs a, a liver transplant, and the the surgery is you know twenty thousand dollars. And if we don't get the twenty thousand dollars now, your mom's gonna die. And so the person just happened to have access to a credit card, like a twenty thousand dollar credit card, and so he sends them the money. Okay, but he also like had only been in the country a few months and didn't quite understand what was happening. And I guess whatever country he's from, they just let you die. You know, <laughs> like like an American be like, oh, you're gonna fix my mom. You're not gonna let my mom die. Like right. if I so you tell me poor people have to die. Well, guess what? If you're in Peru, poor people just die. Yes, like yes. they don't let you into the hospital. They're right. like, the hospital will say, look, you got to give us twenty grand up front for you to be admitted. Otherwise, just you know, tough it out. Like I have a friend whose father had COVID, and they came and they were like, "Look, we need twenty grand, like twenty whatever the equivalent of twenty thousand to admit him." And they were like, "Well, we don't have twenty grand." Oh. And and they were like, "Well, next man, he'll probably be fine." <laughs> yeah. He went home and died. It's just you know that's Peru, <laughs> but they're not going to do that here. They're going to be like, "No, come on in. You know, we'll we'll get you later. We'll put on your credit. We're going to figure it out." So, you know, that's why it's one hundred and twenty dollars for an aspirin. In in in, in, uh, in hospitals, right? But so so in that scam, they had different scams, and all that was one scam where they kept hitting these people. They'd hit, hit somebody for five grand, for ten, for twenty, and this guy paid twenty grand. Well, but he wasn't like he was. I think either he was not in the U, he was new to the U.S. or he was he was either new to the U.S. or he was like a young kid didn't quite understand. Like he was like eighteen or nineteen, and he didn't understand that that's like that seemed like something they could do to him. Um, the other one scam was. Uh, it, there was, there were various scams. One was like that. It was like the, you owe the IRS money. You have to pay five thousand dollars right now, and you had to go and get money or eight hundred dollars or whatever. Another scam was, 
um, where they were hiring like some like it was somebody in the industry in in the photography industry and they contacted they said hey we're from like Vanity Fair or whatever some some big company and they said we're gonna hire you to do fo- a photo shoot in Europe right okay great so they get their stuff together they send them a letter of intent like it's all looks really legit to them and so but just before they're leaving to go they're like okay look you have to pay for the plane yourself we'll reimburse you and you have to pay this eight hundred dollar you know photography fee from from Italy you have to front that money so then you pay 900 bucks to get your plane ticket you pay they say you have to send us 700 bucks or 800 bucks whatever the cost of this 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 license or fee to be a photographer in Italy from the United States so you pay that fee then when you get there there's another fee you have to pay. they end up getting like very little money like a thousand eleven hundred bucks it's minor this person literally paid for their plane ticket flies over to to, to um to Italy I mean it's a whole thing for very little money like and they were like, well, what did they do wrong? And I'm like, well, most of what these people did wrong was they didn't listen to their intuition because every one of these people thought something doesn't feel right. Like, right. that's not right that you right. have to make me pay up front. Like, you're hiring me. Why am I putting up my money? And they, But they were so excited about getting this opportunity to work for Vanity Fair or whoever. It wasn't Vanity Fair, but whoever this big-time person was, they were so excited they didn't want to raise a fuss. You know, the kid is excited. He felt like something wasn't right. But he paid anyway. Right. Um, you know, so the thing is, they didn't question it. Like, there's no reason not to question. Like, well, I didn't want to upset them. What are you talking about? You're not going to upset them. You're asking me for 20 grand. I'm going to make a couple phone calls. Why can't I get off the phone with you? Why yeah. can't I call the hospital back? Why can't I? You know, they, they didn't do that. And that was, so that was the whole thing. So I've heard of scams similar to that. And then one of them was like the, the um, tax type scam. You owe this much money. Yes. You know, the big one is. Where you get these things from Social Security? You get a yes, call. Yes, get from the Social call. Security. Yeah, I've been getting those. I, I, you know, I've gone. Your, your number has been. Well, you know, I, well, your Social Security number has been suspended or yeah. canceled or. Like, what are you right. talking about? Like, you know, I, you know, what I feel like saying, like, I, one time they called and they, I was on the phone in my car and I was telling the guy, bro, please call me back. I'm on my car right now. I can't talk, but I don't want this to happen. I, I don't want my, my, you can't suspend my, like I'm telling him, like I'm terrified. Please, but you have to call me back. There's nothing I can do right now. I'm in my car because I was trying to get home so I could set up my camera shit so, so I could can... record it just because I thought it'd be hilarious. I mean, I literally wanted to get him on the phone and say, listen, bro, obviously, like you're, <laughs> you're in some sweatshop in India or where's, <laughs> where, where's the other one? Uh, uh, is it not Angola? Indonesia? No, not Angle. Uh, Nigeria, Nigeria. Yeah, they're t- they're 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 awesome. <laughs> so you know, I wanted to be like, listen, you're in some sweatshop in Nigeria. You're very good, but you have to understand, there's what you're saying doesn't make sense. Like everything about the scam, if you know anything about how our, our system works, you can't suspend my social security number. What does that even mean? I mean what are you saying? Like I feel like it they means it's 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 uh, uh, lev- levitating. Right. <laughs> I don't need my social security. Like suspend it? How are you going? Like that doesn't mean anything to an American. Like that. You're not going to – so I wanted to say, look, you really need to – listen, here's how you do this, okay? Like I want to tell them right. – I got a better one. Listen, stop telling people that. Right then, you're losing 30% of your people by saying that stupid shit. <laughs> stop it. Like did I he, want to tell them, here's what you do. Did he call you back? No, he, they never do. I've, I've had him on the phone like four times. I always act terrified. Oh, my oh, gosh. No. Oh, <laughs> Call me. I'm ready to give you whatever I need to to get what? unsuspended. What? Listen, sometimes when they start transferring you, because they real at some point they start transferring you, and I'm like, well, what do I need to do? Like, you can tell they know that I'm <laughs> just giving them <laughs> shit. Like, they're like, this is serious, sir. I'm like, oh, no, I'm terrified. I'm terrified. I, uh, you know, um, and they're like, but you can tell they almost want to go. You know, shut up. You know what's going on, don't you? Yeah. You know, you know we're, we're full of it. Right? You yeah. know this is a scam. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> but, yeah, I never managed to get the camera gear on. And that would be so great. <laughs> one day. One day. Yeah, someday. someday. <laughs> or because this is the problem. Like, they, they call on your phone. So if, it, if I had another phone, I could just be like, oh, click. I could record it. Like, I could turn on my the video and be like, this is what that means. You know, but I can't. I can't do that. I have to go home and get my camera. This sucks. <laughs> we might want to get a phone for those type of scams. So your boy would get people on. He get people, old people, to yeah. give him seven hundred bucks here, eight hundred bucks here, yes. thousand there. Whatever. Yes, yes, daily. One one of them, he had some number 
to, to, I guess it was a gay site or or it was a phone number, and he said you just contacted an underage girl, and so you're about to be arrested. I mean, all this stuff to scare people, and they would pay it. I so I knew a guy who, like, I'll t- I, I have to tell him to watch this. He'll be like, Oh my god, what are you talking <laughs> about? So he was from Peru. And he was in Peru, and he was selling. He had a, a a phone. I always say it wrong. It's a phone. Whatever. It's like five hundred people in a in a in a room, like sweat, like a phone sweatshop where they're selling. Right. I forget, like a telemarketing. Telemarketing. Whatever. Center but he called it something. The phone center. He called it a phone center. Right. So he said, "I have a phone center." He would run ads on like Spanish TV in the United States. He thought because he was in Peru. They can't get me. Like, I don't, they don't know what I'm doing is illegal, you know, or I'm not breaking any laws in Peru. And, and because I'm in Peru, I'm not really <laughs> breaking laws in the United States. Like, right. he thinks he found like a loophole, idiot. I mean, so he ends up running these commercials for like the ab roller, right? So you pay $200 for like the ab roller or something when you can get an ab roller for like $29 and you're still overpaying. So he's, <laughs> he's saying, look, but it's COD. So you just call, you know, and they, the commercial is like, look, you know, they've got some big fat guy who start, gets the ab roller, and then suddenly they show another guy who looks like him. He's really thin with abs. He's like, oh, I did this for two months. I mean, it's just completely ridiculous ab, uh, <laughs> thing. And these guys at 2 o'clock in the morning, they call. Did it shut off? You good? Yeah. So at 2 o'clock in the morning, they call, and they because they don't have to pay anything right then, it's COD, and they order it. Well, then he would have it mailed there. And of course, when they get it, they're like, I don't want this. Like, oh, it's two, it's $200, it's 150 bucks, whatever it is. They're like, they have to, now they have to fork out the money. And they're right. like, yeah, I don't want it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, he, you gave him all your information on the phone. So his collection company, now most of these people are, are like illegal aliens, right? Two o'clock, they're calling at two o'clock in the morning. They're, they're, a, um, they're a, um, a laborer. And so his, collection company would call and say look you ordered this and you didn't get you didn't pay for it. yeah i know i changed my mind no no but you ordered it you owe, owe the money so we're gonna file a warrant against you and it's our understanding that you're in the country illegally now 90 percent of them were and they'd be like well what well, yeah you're you're an illegal alien you know mr juan you know mr sanchez or mr you know whatever and they'd be like oh oh and they Say, look, we're gonna, we're, we know your address. We're gonna contact ICE. We're gonna. Th- so now you're. It, it's basically, it's, it's. You're threatening them with a. Um, it's extortion. Right. So it falls under that. Falls under the extortion laws. You can't threaten someone with arrest. You can't threaten like this is all. Keep in mind, they are illegal. They didn't pay. Right. They're, but you know, there's no. You, now you're saying arrest, warrant, deportation. Right. Like you can't do all that. What are you Without doing? Without the authority, it's, yes. Right. You yes. don't have the authority, and you're. And he's like, yeah, but. Yes, but we were in Peru. <laughs> it was like, so what? So people would, and then he would do this. Like he'd say, now you owe, we've already filed. Like you, three days ago, you didn't accept it. We've already filed the warrant. So now you owe $500 to get the warrant quashed, plus the $200 for the ab or $100, whatever it was. And so they're like, oh, like they're terrified. Then he, they have them immediately go and put money here and wire money here and go to, go to Western Union. I mean, they're, they got these people terrified. So he's like, we, we did this for, you know, a year or two, whatever. It just went, and he's like, the collections were massive. And then, by the way, they never sent you the ab roller. I was like, did they get the ab roller? He goes, no, why would I get the ab roller? What? I'm not resending the ab roller. Like, well, I used the same ab roller. Yeah, same. <laughs> Can you I had to buy six of those things. Like, there was no, yeah. <laughs> the box was empty. It was a brick. <laughs> so um, who's going who's to fork out 200 bucks? <laughs> so what, what happens is, is uh, eventually he gets indicted. Like they track back, the FBI tracks it all the way back and eventually figures out who it is. They indict him and three or four other people. And he thinks it doesn't matter that I'm indicted. He doesn't even know he's indicted. He literally comes to like fly into town one day on a convention. On a, on Why? A, because he's also a poker player. So he flies in for a poker tournament. And of course, he gets to the airport. He gets off the plane, you know. Well, I hear, well, I'm here, I hear. I don't know what I'll do. I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna check out that Circus Olay, and I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Look up, see how my brother's doing, and <laughs> boom, hands behind the back, slams him down. You know, the whole thing. Never got out of prison. How Never. much time they give him? Not much. I mean, he got like 
he got like four years or something, and he would have thought, you would have thought they gave him 40 years. Yes. He cried the whole time. He was the whole yes. time, I don't deserve this. I don't this. And I was like, yeah, what does it matter? I mean, you were only extorting little brown people. And he was, I was like, yeah, who cares? Who cares about them? And he was like, stop it. Don't say, you know, keep an eye. He's, he's Peruvian. So he's, he's a little brown he's, person. Yes. He's so, he'd be like, stop doing, that's not what I was doing. I was like, yes, you were. You were like, oh, so who cares? To hell with those guys, right? That you terrified them. Stop it. And then he would say, every once in a while, he'd go, they were illegal. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was okay. He's like, like, he's like that, that justifies that, exactly. it. Exactly. That justifies it. They shouldn't have been there. They're not Americans anyway. Hey, I'm like, right. apparently the U.S. De- <laughs> defends <laughs> them. In, like, yeah, exactly. The U.S. <laughs> prosecutors felt that that was still illegal. It's like, you can't go around shooting people because, yeah, you know, I know I shot that guy, but he's it's illegal. Still- your so, honor, good point. That's yeah. a good point. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's a that's a two point um, a reduction. Two point reduction. <laughs> um, yeah, he uh, the whole time he was upset about it, and and when I first met him, the the when I first met, it was he shouldn't be here. Right. That's what he kept saying. I shouldn't be here. I didn't I do anything mean, wrong. I don't know what those co- what the collection people were doing. Like those were subcontractors. I don't know what they were doing. And then as I hung out with him and talked to him. You know, they slowly start admitting a little here, a little there, and I'm like, "Look, you're a con- you're a con man, bro. I mean, it's fine. You're that's a, a, see, a to me. That's man. that's a con man. Yeah. Oh, oh no. He's look. He was. This is another thing he was doing, which I thought was great. Um, he would. So you have different tiers as far as um, because eventually he says he finally he says to me and my buddy Pete. He goes. I had a buddy Pete in, in prison, and we used to go, "Come on, bro, you're, you're look, you're a scumbag." He's like, "Okay, I'm a scumbag too. We're, we're together. We're, it's okay." <laughs> he goes, stop it, stop it. That's not true. No, but eventually he says, he admits, he's a I, I, "I knew what they were doing. Yeah, I knew what they were doing. I, I even told them what they. That was a big problem. There were emails where I told them, "Do this. Do you know?" I was in telling them. I knew, you know. So, but then as we start, he all starts opening up and telling us stuff he was doing. I remember him telling me, he's like, I'm telling you stuff that I've done that nobody knows. So, I mean, one, so soccer games, for instance, they have different tiers. Right. And so he's in South America. In South America, you can bet on anything. You know, you can bet on anything here. But you can bet on South America, let's say, different, like you have like, whatever, the different tiers as far as like, you know, A-League, Triple A-League, you know, whatever, as far as um, soccer games are concerned. So he would get, but you can only bet so much, right? Out of the country. No, he's in Peru. Right. And but he's betting on like Peruvian or Venezuelan so in, in soccer. Per, so where was the limitation set? The, the For li- Peru or? No, no, in general, just on the app. So there's oh, like a betting okay, app. Okay, okay. And you can take a bet on to decide who wins. Is it going to be the Tigers or is it going to be, you know, the, the elephants? Right, Which one's going right. to win? And by how much? And you know they have different like oh it's, they're going to lose by this much or they're going to win by this much or more than this much. And right. he said the problem is you could only bet so much so that they the people running the the thing they can only are we good? Yeah. They they can only um, lose so much. Right. So but keep in mind he had these call centers, and he has two hundred three hundred employees. So he would go and he would open up the he would get accounts on the betting app in all the employees' names. And he wow. would start betting like close to the max that the. Give it to him. All right, it's on. So he would start betting. Cl- he would start betting for the employees close to the max that they were going to lose by more than a certain amount. Right. Does that make sense? So they're supposed. You're supposed to lose by at least three points. But he'll three put, goals. He put up it up to six. Yeah, he'd say, right, well, they're going to lose, but they're going to lose by six, by at least right. at least six. Right. And then he'd bet like close to the max on like 30 or 40 or 50 different employees because right. he could only go so much. Then he would turn around and he'd go to the soccer game. And just before the soccer game, he, he told me, he said, I, I would go. He said, this, this is actually what he said, what happened one time. He said, one time I walked in like to the um, locker room. And he goes in and, and he goes into several of the, the – there's like four or five of the like the top guys on the team, and he walks in. He says, "Hey, listen, let me uh let me talk to you guys." They're like, "Hey, man, we can't. We're, we're getting ready for the game. We can't talk about it." So no, no, I want. I got a proposal for you. They go, well, "We don't. 
we, we can't, but we've got to go. We're, we got, we're a couple of minutes. To, you're not supposed to be out here. You're not supposed to be in the back. What are you doing? Closing, and he's telling the guy, close the door. Close the door. And the guy's like, no, no, no. He's going. I, I don't, we don't have no proposal. He's, look, listen, you're going to lose. What? He goes, you're going to lose. We all know you're going to lose this game. The other, they're, they're supposed to beat you by like three points at minimum. You're going to lose. He's like, no, nah, we're going to, we we got a good chance. He's like, look, I'm not say, look, we both know you're going to lose. I'm saying, I, I've got, there's money in it for you if you lose by a certain amount. And he said the guy actually stopped and went, Juan, close the door. <laughs> he said the guy closed the door and he said, you're supposed to lose by, you're, you're, you're scheduled to lose by at least by three points, right? He said, I'm asking you if you guys can lose by six points, I'll pay you $1,000 a piece. And, and, of course, whatever it was, they were like, whoa. Like, uh, I don't uh, know what the equivalent, what, what the well, amount was. A, 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 a soccer team is what, like 10, 12 people? Yeah, yeah, but he's not. it's not all of them. He goes, there's like four or five, like the top guys. Oh. You only need a few guys to beat. Like, the, 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 the bulk of a soccer team is pulled by a few guys. Right. You know, there are the guys that are holding the positions, but they're average. Like, he's got, like, the top four guys, like – you know, so okay, so uh, like the goalie or whatever, you know. So oh, there's that, a few. Guys. That's the important one, right? So he hits them up, and they're like, "All right, all right." He said, "So then, of course, he said the bets are already made. So I've already put the money in on these guys." He said, "And I got these guys." The man, he said, they lost by like nine points or something. He said, "Outrageous!" Like I got paid. He said, "I ended up making like thirty thousand dollars or something." Like, and each employee, this guy got like however many. I don't know what they're called. Uh, they, they're not called pay. But they they've got like the. I always called him Peru Baboos because he's from Peru. Peru Baboos. I mean, <laughs> like, so you made what, like 20, 30 Peru Baboos? And he'd go, it, they're called Lira. I think that they're called Lira. And I go, whatever. So how many Peru Baboos did you make? I, mean, <laughs> I think so, their court currency is wood or something anyway. It's something bizarre. <laughs> oh, something bizarre. So, um, he, uh, yeah, so he, that was like, and he did that. All like over, and he's like, Oh, one time I did this, one time I did this, and he was like, Because the lower the tier, you can't bet as much. But he said, These guys are playing for like 50 bucks. He said, So you go in and you say, Look, $300. They're like, Wow, like you can for Peru for 300 bucks, that's like that's the average person's monthly income, right? They're like, $300. <laughs> we play two games a month, we get paid 50 bucks, plus I have to have another full time job. Heck yeah, 300 bucks. <laughs> so he pays three or four guys 300 bucks a piece, and he wins 30 grand. Rigging it. Rigging it. That's that's illegal everywhere. Yeah, I, I know, but it was. But Some of I never met anybody that had done I never met anybody who'd done it. Me and either. That was one of the things he had done. You know, plus the, the his whole extortion scheme. And I, I always loved it when I would say, well, your whole extortion thing, it wasn't extortion. I'm like, that's not what your indictment says. <laughs> your indictment <laughs> says, that's not what the articles that I read said. <laughs> Yeah, enough already. Enough. <laughs> How we deny the uh, Good time. painfully Good time. obvious. <laughs> so that's the only. What what was it? So you think I remember now? <laughs> oh, I remember. Let's see, tonight you'll be laying in bed going, "Oh, she said that this. one. I should have said me. this." We'll do another one. We'll do another one. <laughs> like, right. listen, I got these guys. Keep in mind, I was in a low security prison. You were in like a medium or a pen and a pen in yeah. a penitentiary. Yeah. So they, yeah. There well, was, you were in the medium and a pen. You were, in a, you were in a medium at one point, but yeah. even still, there's still just a bunch of things. Ninety-nine percent thugs. Well, <coughs> it's like there's there's like thirty guys in the whole. There's like the there's drug, like the drug guys, dealers are boring. Yeah, well, there's yeah. like twenty guys in the whole compound that you can actually have a conversation with. Yeah, you know, and everybody else is like is is, is just and, drug dealers. And, and, and gener- dealers. Generally, the so here's not to get off on that topic, but in a penitentiary, the drug dealers are boring. They're they're fictitious. Most of them, they're, right. they're, they're not even real. All the stories, you can't even believe it. But um, the interesting people would be the murderers. Nice. <laughs> the, the, murderers, the murderers are very interesting. Those are the ones you talk to. But I did, I did meet a, a guy that was in for like Bernie Madoff or the, um, what do they call that? A, um, what was it? Bernie Madoff was a Ponzi scheme. Ponzi. Ponzi scheme that they accused him. I've been trying. I want to look this guy up because they, they he beat them in. Listen, he beat them in trial. Like this guy reminds me of you, Matt. So I except love, listen, the, the, if you're a scumbag, uh, a con man, everybody always says, you know, he reminded me. Of you. No, 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 no. Okay, all right. So you mean because he was handsome? 
he he was he's a, a handsome guy. He had the slick back hair. He was he was he was definitely he was cool as hell. I called him Bruce Wayne. I called him Bruce because he was wealthy, nice. right? Well, but with other people's money, yeah. <laughs> out of Houston, this was I was in Beaumont, so this was out of Houston. But I want to tell you the story because the the okay, I want to tell you the reason they had him there and what it called for, you know, and because I thought it was hilarious because all he did was steal people's money like his he took his investors money and he didn't return it or didn't invest it the way he was supposed to invest it but he beat them at trial the first time like this is we were in the law library he was he was very smart and he was telling me how he beat them at trial the first time and the prosecutor he thought his head was going to explode it was red because his lawyer said you know when the not guilty verdict came his lawyer's like, okay, Your Honor, so is my client going to be released? And the prosecutor's like, no, no, I'll have him indicted in 10 minutes. <laughs> and I want, the, the prosecutor lost his mind. But I want to tell you this because I, I, I can't exactly remember the specifics. But here's the, the beauty of it because they got him another charge and they managed to convict him and he was fighting his second conviction. But the prosecutor got him to a penitentiary. Mm-hmm. Because oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he has this well, man is guys, ne- white collar crimes go straight to the pen, like white collar like, like never been in trouble before. Yes, like, white collar, went to trial, lost, boom, gets them, sends them straight to a pen. How is that possible? But, but, killed? Yes, right. Yes, we we talked about it in the library. I said they actually sent you here for what they call prison justice. Like a, a, they get in their mind because I'm because I'm fighting his points. I mean his points were like a 17, but they gave him all of this violence because when he was in school, he got into a fight when he was in like in the, in the ninth or 10th grade. They put him in a pen for a fight he had in school in the ninth and 10th grade. Like, I'm, I'm like that's amazing, but I, I go, they put you here so that we would, we would do something to you. That's what I told him. Right, right. But he was white, white guy, so obviously he had to run with the Aryan brothers and then he had to put in work. So we're sitting there, and I'm like, you gotta like beat somebody up or stab somebody or get into a fight or yes. hit somebody. But he was putting in work. Yes, it's putting in work. But they put him there because of a fight he had in the ninth grade. And so he has to go there and get into another fight just to survive. And I, I go, that's how crappy our system is. That a prosecutor would lose a trial and think to himself, you know what? I, I, I'm gonna really hurt you. In, in, including your life and everything. I'll just try to wipe your life out by putting you in a penitentiary based on something you did in the ninth grade. There was a guy I met in the low, and his name was Lance. I forget his Lance something. But he was he was basically, they were, he run some kind of a fraud or something, went to trial, uh, that lost. Out of Tampa? Yeah. Out of, out of, I knew him. What happened to him? Did he end you know, up he winning? Went, he went to a pen like he lost. They sent him to a pen. Lost. Went to a pen, and when he got there, guy, a couple of guys, a couple of big guys came up to him and said, "Hey, look, you're gonna pay this much money." And he goes, well, "I'm not gonna pay that." And he, this guy's like sixty something, almost seventy years old, and he's little, he's old, and he's you know he wasn't little or anything. He was a bigger guy, not me. He was average height, but he was white hair, and he just you know look just looked like an old man. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna pay you. I'm not paying anything." They said. No, you're going to put this much money on our books every single month, and we're going to protect you. He says, no, I'm not going to do that. Guy punched him right, bam, just smashed him right in there, knocked out a couple of his teeth. I mean, just, you know, this is a big guy. You know, you, you, he just, I mean, this guy had, this guy is defenseless. He, he doesn't even try. He's like, I didn't even try and defend myself because I've never been punched before. So I didn't even realize it was coming because the, the guy just like was like, wham, and just, he just, I mean, he had this, he's missing a tooth, another tooth is cracked, another one is, I mean. Prison justice. Yeah, and he hit the ground, ended up in the shoe, and then eventually the warden was, you know, the warden was like, no, 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 no. You know, the warden comes through the, the shoe, and eventually I think the warden came in and realized and saw who he, saw him and saw who he was and looked and was like, no, 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 it's no. Pro- no. It's called and, prosecutor right. justice. It's- and they moved him, like, jumped him from, like, the, the pin down to, like, the low. But he did do like six or eight months. And, of course, he was only on the compound for a few days Yeah. until that they came to him and said, hey. this I'm trying to remember his name. I think it's Vance was his name. I, 
But I, this this guy, he he made it the whole time. I think he had to do like eight months. But we were, I was helping him in the. He he told me he could get in trouble just talking to me. And and but I was helping him the whole time trying to get his points down. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. He's like I got into a fight in the ninth grade, and now I have to come here and jump on some guy to be able to walk the come. I got to walk with the Aryan brothers. All because I won trial. All because I won trial. The the old Ponzi buying and Ponzi scheme, taking other people's money and not investing it where you're supposed to invest it. So, I think Matt's lost interest in our. Podcast. No, it's not that. I just, I just, um, I have a, There's a, a producer that I actually was talking to for oh. a while, and she, a, a mutual friend, just sent me an email saying she's mm-hmm. producing something and oh, wow. whatever. I actually pitched her a story, um, which she pitched to uh, uh, Fifty Cent. Uh, people and they loved the story and then COVID happened and then I didn't hear and then she said oh it's been put on hold and then this and this has happened when COVID just wiped out a whole slew of things that I had going yeah, but, but now it's, it's all starting up again. yes it's all coming back right. around what was that we were talking about you know they'll they'll start going what was that story that such and such pitched to me see if you can get her back on the phone you know that all that stuff will come back around yeah you know fine. look listen I would you know the worst day out here is better than than the best day inside. So it's like, look, if things just continue to go the way they're going, I, I got no complaints. I got no complaints. <laughs> me, me either. And you were in a in a soft camp. I was, I was in the hard oh, one. Listen, and, and the fr- it, you know, and the thing is, the fraud stories in there, like just one after another oh. after another. That you know, just, I wish I would have. You would have. It was. It was tons. It was like great entertainment. Like I, I'll bet. You know, the problem is like when I hear stories about violence. Or you know, th- it, it turns my stomach so much, like it it depresses me. So these guys, when I was in the medium, and you would um, I, you would hear guys talk about you know, yeah, and I kicked in the door, or I grabbed the dude, and I did, and it was just like like I would physically feel I- ill, and it was like it was depressing. But I got, went to the to the low, and you sit with a bunch. All the fraud guys seek each other out. So you're sitting there going, well, what did you do? And he's telling you the story. You know, you get this this joy. <laughs> this was like, oh my God, you did Taking what? The system. What happened? Oh, that's hilarious. So what? I, oh, listen, I was terrified. Uh, they called. You know, I, I ran out the back, and I, you know, you're like, oh my God, why didn't you just say this? I didn't know. I didn't know. Just like like me when you catch them delivering the story perfectly. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, and the timing and everything as they're reliving it. You know, the, you can see in their eyes, they're back in the moment, traveling. It's awesome. There was a guy named um, Andrew Levinson. Who sold? He did what's called a biz op scam, a that? business opportunity scam, oh. where he sold sections of cities and would sell you like Red Bull vending machines, and you get fifteen if you buy, and you get this is your section, and I won't sell it to anybody else, and, it, and it's a whole thing. It w- really wasn't that much of a scam, but he one time I remember he had told me this story, and he delivered it with su- it was so just great. And then the next time, like a week later, we were all sitting having lunch, and I said, hey, tell him the story about such and such. And he told the story, but he left out like a part of the story. And I was like – and I was so disappointed. I was like, nah, bro, remember you said last time when you told me – you said this. And he goes – and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's what – yeah, yeah, that happened. I'm like, oh, bro, well, you, next – got to tell the story like that. That's – like you – your setup was perfect. Like that. I was trying to tell well, him you, how to tell his you have, story. That's what you were doing to me, but you, uh, you have to – the, the the mood has to be right. You really have to because to, I know because you had told me like, look, you know, I was like, well, where were you getting the guys? You were like, oh, listen, what, we used to go in and we would go into the court and we yeah. would and you explain that whole thing. Then when you just told me, you're like, yeah, drug dealers, this, that. It's like, well, it was a no, uh, no, no, well, no, the it, court, it, the court. <laughs> yeah, that's the best part. You totally skated over the court. You true, true. Hey, listen, you you think you tell your story the same every time? No, no, I'm mine. I mean, it's probably subtly different, but listen, I, I subtly, I, 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 I I've heard you skim over some parts. I, I do, I do. If my, if like, look, it, it really, honestly, it depends. It depends on, it depends on the subscriber count. Like, if you've got half a million subscribers, I'm giving you the full story. If you've got forty thousand or, or twenty thousand or five thousand subscribers. Then it's like, yeah, listen, I'm I'm not giving you everything. I'm not going to tell you the two and a half hour version. You're getting the hour version. The hour version, 
I leave a lot of stuff out uh, yes. because you don't deserve it. And, you know, or if it's like a Zoom, it's like, look, if you flew me out, you flew me out to Houston and it's like Valuetainment. What, Houston, I think they went down. But so if you flew me out to Valuetainment, or if you put me up in a in a nice hotel and I'm gonna we got we I know we got a couple hours you're gonna get the full treatment, but if it's a Zoom and you know come on stop you're not paying me it's a Zoom it's the middle of the day this sucks I'm not telling you the whole thing, like because your Greenville or your what is it North Carolina it was South North Carolina South Carolina that was my favorite when you this close. Like you just, met, I love that story, yeah. and I've heard it about four times. But I'm not gonna. I, I've never heard it the same as when we had Harmon's classroom on a Saturday, and you're you're out like, oh, I'm like, what, Zach? Blah, blah, blah. And you're in the front. I'm at a desk, and you're at at the board. Like, oh, boom, boom. Listen, listen. <laughs> it's good times. Good yes, time. yes. Well, you know that you have you have a captive audience, and I have all the time in the world. And who was it? It was me. It was one other person. I can't remember who. It, who that was? It was. It was one other person. There was. There was three of us. <laughs> you remember, what? You remember the Snickers? What was that douche? That douchebag that used to come by and he would put his Snickers on my desk. Like I was a. We were teachers. We had to teach a GED. We had this idiot. These idiot students and this guy. Oh, the, the guy would come. Mega idiots. This guy would come and and he put his Snickers on my on my de- desk like. And I would go, Man, get out of here with your Snickers, bro. And he'd laugh. And he did it all the time. So one day he comes and he puts the Snickers on the desk like, huh? here's the Snickers. huh? And I go, boom, I grab it. I peel it open. I eat it. And he goes, ah! what did you do? That was my Snickers. And I was like, fuck you. You put it on my fucking desk, you fucking smart ass. You were, and he's like, like, you want it back? He's like, you owe me a Snickers. <laughs> We had, we had, uh, unfortunately, we had good times in there with Harmon. It was funny. Oh, man. I used to, look, somebody asked me when I got out of, out of prison, they go, what's the difference between the medium and, and the low? And I went, you know, I said, it's, it's hard to explain, but the, in the simplest, simplest explanation is this. If you're in the medium and someone leaves a Snickers on your pillow, don't eat it. If, you're, if you come into your cell in the low and someone's left a Snickers, you can eat it. <laughs> he knows. He's like, I'm sure that leaves him like. He's like, well, what is that? What is that, man? You're not. You, it's not dangerous. Right, you're, you're not gonna have to do another. <laughs> Some guy comes. He comes back for his Snickers. He goes, fuck you. You fucking Snickers. You fuck. You know. You're of course. Not, you're in a fucking and, and, and in the medium, the the guy says, fuck you. Yeah, the guy right? says, you know. Oh, <laughs> like what was I, the Snickers for? Fuck I, you. <laughs> I see you. I see you ate my Snickers. That's right. <laughs> the door closes. <laughs> Fuck me! <laughs> oh my god, it's yeah. funny now. <laughs> it wasn't funny no. at the time. What about um? What about the way like when I introduced myself? To you? <laughs> do, do you remember that? Yeah, oh yeah. I'm leaning in. Listen, I don't talk to nobody. I'm not talking to anybody there. I got guys coming up to me offering to buy buy me sneakers. Oh like, yeah, people like yeah. yeah. What about do you need a friend? Like yeah, big, Matt, can you want to live with me? I need a friend. You're like, yeah. well, don't you know anybody on the compound? Yeah. You know? like, guys like uh, hey uh, homosexuality. Can I, yeah, can I talk to you? Can I? I've not been there like two days. I'm like, uh, yeah, what's up? Uh, uh, you need anything? I don't even know. I don't know anything about prison, but I know that didn't sound right. And I'm like, no. you got the, but you had the long hair, Matt. I mean, that's oh yeah, I had grown. I had grown, no, it was was it grown out? A little yes, bit, you had the, the shaggy. Show, yes. Listen, these guys. I'm like, I'm like, and no, I don't need anything. I mean, I got whatever you need, bro. You need tennis shoes? I'll get you tennis shoes. You need? I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't need anything, bro. What, what, what's good? I'm just saying, you know, uh, looking for me a friend. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> No, I don't. I said, I mean, this is a friendly compound. There's lots of guys here. I'm sure they could be your friends. You can't talk to somebody else in the compound. Yeah, I'm like, and, he, and he's sitting and he's like, because I'm just saying. Uh, and and all, all of it, big black guys, right? All, all of them. All of them, big black guys. All right. So then I hear, I get a, and I hear Matt Cox is on the compound. Yeah. I said, Matt Cox? The infamous Matt Cox? I'm like, oh my God, I've been dying to meet that guy. Can somebody point him out? He so read what? Some the, articles on me. Yes. So I see Matt walking on the compound. I'm like, holy Mac, well, that's Matt Cox. So I said, I'm going to introduce myself and walk up. So I said, hey, Matt, you know, I heard we have a lot in common. No, wait. wait. 
it? And Matt's you like, oh, you- my God, another <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. And then I keep walking, right? Yeah. I go, oh. But then you came up later. He comes up. This is a, the one I remember because you told me this one. Right, because I said, hey, you know we got a lot in common. And I just you? walk off. <laughs> yeah. So the second time, I'm leaning up against the fence. And he comes and walks over and says, uh, leans up against the fence. He goes, hey, uh, you know, I hear we got a lot in common. I go, and I same thing. I take off. <laughs> then Sh- is Sheldon or whatever, the, the, the white mean- guy with the, had the mullet. Was it? Oh, yeah. Then he comes oh, up to me and says, God. hey, bro, uh, I, I got a guy that wants to meet you. And I go, what the fuck does that mean? I mean, I'm, re- I'm, I'm ready. To, I'm like, what does that mean? What do you mean you got a guy that wants to meet me? I mean, I don't need to meet him. Like, it's like, you want to know, is the meet uh, M-E-E-T or I, M-E-A-T? It, yeah, right. I mean, it's bad. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm, I'm having a heart. Like, at this point, I'm not talking to nobody. I'm I'm very uncomfortable. Understood, understood. And uh, and he's like, no, no, he's here for. He goes, he he wants to talk to you. He knows who you are. He's heard about you. I'm like, what do you mean he's heard about me? Like, who the he's heard about me? And he goes, no, he, he goes, he's here for fraud. I'm like, whoa, he's here for fraud. Well, where is he? <laughs> and he's like, he's right over there. He tried to talk to you before. He said he thinks that maybe you don't like uh, black guys or something. Or I was like, well, I mean, I don't like guys that I think are hitting on me. That's what I don't like. I mean, you don't. What do you do? You know, I mean. So I, I walked over and he's I'm like, well, what are you doing? What are you here for? And he, and he goes, you know, I read some articles on you. I'm here for fraud. You're here for fraud. And I was like, what? And the rest is history. This is huh? great. <laughs> and the rest is history. <laughs> Good times. Good times. 14, 13, 14 years ago. Right. <laughs> and I really assumed I'd be getting out before him and he got out before me. So oh, I remember <laughs> so I remember that. I, I remember he told me, he said, he goes, bro, I had the weirdest dream last night and, and, and you were in it. And, and like, like you were calling me and you were, and I was, I was trying to push five. So the phone call would go through and I was, I was at home. I was like watching TV and I was, I was like, you know, and like he, he, every couple of months he would tell me some story about how I was always in prison and I was trying to call him. He's like, same thing. I couldn't get push five. It wouldn't go through. I'm like, how come in all of your dreams where I'm in it, I'm still in prison and you're on the outside? And he goes, I mean, bro, you got 26 years. I mean, and, let's face it. I'm and I've only, I've only got 16. So and he goes, I'm getting out before you. You were wrong. I was about wrong. That. You were wrong. <laughs> they underestimated me. And, and so you like, you wanted to write me so I would have yeah, to press yeah, yeah. five. Yeah. I, I remember when I got out, I was thinking, I'm going to find him. I'm going to write him and I'm going to say, call me. I'm what was the reason five. you said you didn't write? I was waiting till I like got to a point, you know, where I was like, like literally you have to think by the time I I wanted to get out of the halfway house, you know, so I got, I wanted to get out of the halfway house and kind of have my shit together, like mail you some money, you know, do something like, boom, Hey, I'm out. (laughs) And then, and then suddenly I got that phone call from, Oh yeah. From that Um, crazy old boxer. Yes. Um, that's my brother's best friend. What's his name anyway? Glenn. Um, Glenn. Suddenly Glenn calls up. Do you know a guy named? Isaac Allen, and I'm like, yeah, what? I'm standing here right now. He's, a, I'm like, what? Like, I was like, he shouldn't be. Did he just really buy a painting from you or something? He's bought a few paintings from me, yeah. Oh, yeah, he was telling me that. It's like, oh, man, I got this guy, man. He was in for fraud, too, man. I'm like, really? What's his name? Matt Cox. I'm like, what? No. Oh, I got his number, dude. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's been quite a journey, man. Yeah. <laughs> we it's really, been, none of this shit. <laughs> this whole thing about prison probably shouldn't be in there. Are we wrapping this up? Let's wrap this up. Okay. This is all bad. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, we. It's all bad. It is all bad. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know why you did this. I don't either. My fault. My fault. But yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so that gets edited. So um, as if, as far as my first broadcast, I mean, I guess I don't know how I did, but it was kind of an honor going over. But I'm sure if I can think of some more. Do you got to think of some more scams? Yes, or, yes. I, I've heard of a ton, and I'm just drawing a blank. You know, and I didn't know if you were going to bring some, but I could bring some well, that I thought is, of. This is plenty. This is good. Good amount of time. All right. Okay, so uh, bye. Uh, what are we yeah. saying? <laughs> That's it. Uh, you, you're supposed to say, um, so if you no. Oh, all right, my fault. <laughs> you go, yeah, I, I'm, I say, uh, so if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, share the video, and leave a comment for the algorithm, and turn the bell notification on so that you get notified the next time we have uh, Zach on and, and or any videos so that you can listen to him and uh, see ya. And that's it. No, it, I'm